Good morning, Central Baptist Church. Glad you're here today. If, if you would, at this time, please stand for the presentation of the colors. Did it go in? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We are going to do the pledge to the Bible, which I didn't bring up here with me. Sorry. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, I will make it a lamp to my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Let us pray. Father, thank you for our day in you. Help us, Lord, to thank those who have gone on before us, the veterans that have served so well to our country, and those men and women that are serving today. Lord, place us in that place of thankfulness. Help our hearts to be willing to listen and to be evident, Lord, that you have given us our country, that you have given us our flag, and that you expect us to have that tradition of thankfulness. Thank you, Lord, for this day. It's a day you have made, and it I rejoice. Amen. Before you sit, don't sit. If you are a member of any of the armed forces, would you please stay standing as the others sit? We want to take this moment to thank you for serving us, your country, our fellow man. Thank you men for being this faithful. At this time, we're going to say as a church, thank you.
Look forward. I got so caught up. <laughs> Glad to be with you today. We got a lot of going on. We're going to have some more going on. But before we do, I just want to tell you about a little bit about what's happening today. As soon as we finish the church service this morning, we will pray in here. Then we're going to go upstairs. I know that some of our ladies are going to be building some Ten trays for, uh, I guess that would be this and this, wouldn't it? Ten. Uh, going to be building trays for our homebound. And so we've got that going to be going out today. But also, they'll be doing that in the beginning of the line. And then you feel free. But as my senior adults come up that have a little struggle with getting there, uh, we are working on uh, making sure that they get in the front of the line so you help them to cut and get in there and get done and, and get their food, okay? We want to do that today. Also, today we're going to be preaching not only about the mighty men of God, we're going to be preaching about the power of God to work through mighty men and women of God. And I just want you to know today, this is the first time that I've had the privilege of being a part of also the Space Force flag, which is the N1 on the end there. Uh, far in, and uh, I'm, I thank you for bringing that, David, and, and uh, David goes to First Baptist Church in Dumas, so he really doesn't know what a really good church is, so we'll do, <laughs> we'll show him today, we'll show him today. Also, we had the two guys that were here today, David Reckforce, Reck or Rakoff, I didn't get it right. Anyway, U.S. flag he brought in. He was Navy, a combat medic, and a lieutenant. And then Mel Carter brought in the... Te That's a more of a Baptist name, Mel Carter. Yeah. And uh, he was a sergeant. Uh, he brought in the Texas flag. He was Air Force for four years, also security police. And we are so proud that they were here today. Also, David Garrett it was a criminal investigator. He came home to do that same work. He was 21 years in the Army, sergeant, 
SFC first class. I did good, didn't I? You did good. We're glad you guys are here. Thank you for coming. I want you to know also that if you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. We want to take this opportunity to thank you for coming, and we want to feed you afterwards. Isn't that cool? And so we're going to have our Thanksgiving meal today, and if you say, no, we didn't plan on doing that, well, you got to eat, so you might as well come. A little later in the uh, service, near the end of church today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to take the offering at the end of the service today. And our offering guys will bring by the offering. If you're visiting with us, if you don't mind filling out this little piece right here, or you may write your name down on the back of this and your uh, information and just drop it over in the offering plate. That way I have a record of your visit with us. We're glad you're here. We're glad to be a part of today's service. And I'm glad, what a song that is. Y'all did a great job. Thank you for singing. Appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. We're glad y'all are here with us. One thing we know for certain, this past week is one of the most hectic weeks and crazy weeks you'll ever see in every, every four years. It's also one of the most nerve-wracking weeks, whichever side of the aisle, whether you're in the middle with, you know. But one thing we can be sure of, our eternity and our security is not dependent on who wins the elections. Our eternity and security is dependent on the victory that we have through Jesus Christ. And we will have that regardless of what happens in the United States. So we can hold fast to Christ and we are secure. So I'm going to invite you all to sing with us. Let's sing together, Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groanings Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins and won the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory and i heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels 
shall see me and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory sing it out oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood and my redeemer greatest treasure of my longing soul my god like you there is no other true delight is found in you alone your grace a well too deep to fathom your love exceeds the heavens reach your truth a fount of perfect wisdom my highest good and my unending need oh lord my rock and my redeemer strong defender of my weary heart my sword to fight the cruel deceiver and my shield against his hateful dodge my song when enemies surround me my hope when tides of sorrow rise my joy when trials are abounding your faithfulness my refuge in the night y'all stand as we sing this last Oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, gracious Savior of my ruined life, my guilt and cross laid on your shoulders, in my place you suffered, bled, and died. And you rose, you rose. The grave and death are conquered. You broke my bonds of sin and shame. Sing that again. You rose. You rose. The grave and death are conquered. You broke my bonds of sin and shame. Oh Lord. My rock and my redeemer, may all my days bring glory to your name. May all my days bring glory to your name. Open our eyes.
19 says, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. I want to invite y'all to sing that again as Brother James comes to lead us. Let's, let this be our prayer before we open up his word. Sing it. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus to reach out and touch him and say. going to be 2 Samuel 23rd chapter. We're going to start in the 8th verse. These are near the last words of David. In fact, it says in many commentaries that these were the last words. I'm not sure if that's totally correct. I'm sure he spoke some after this, but they may have meant the last words of significance. And so he's been talking about his mighty men, those that went with him through the tough times, those that struggled in the hard times. You know, we had a lot of mighty men in America. Had a lot of mighty men and women who have stood the test of time. They had stood whenever Hitler and all those regimes come against us. They, they stood for several things. Here's one thing that they stood. They stood for their fellow man. And that one thing I want to speak on today. Because I want us to understand that when God starts working and God starts delivering our hearts to Him, there's several little things that we oftentimes want to do. We kind of shut things down. We don't oftentimes go forward in where we need to be as children of God. Now, I've given you all plenty of time by killing a little bit of time to find Second Samuel. Second Samuel, 23rd chapter, starting in verse 8. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had. Joseph, Bashabeth, uh, Tachamonite. We're just going to call him Josh for the short of it. Because <laughs> that's only godly. I don't want to mispronounce the man's name. Chief of the captains he was called. Adino the Esnite because of 800 slain by him at one time. Literally, that means that he was in a battle, and he took 800 warriors at one time himself with his sword. Talks about a mighty man right there. And after him was Eleazar, son of Dodo, the Ahohites, one of the three mighty men with David, when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there to battle, and the men of Israel had withdrawn. In other words, they left. What's he do? He arose and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword, and the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to strip the slain. In other words, they come back after the battle, after they were already dead, the Israelites come in and strip the Victor, victors uh, of their uh, all the things that they had that was worth anything. In other words, they weren't being very godly, were they? Verse 11, now after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, a Hararite, 
And the Philistines were gathered into a troop where they was a, there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he took his stand in the middle of the midst of the plot, defended it, and struck the Philistines, and the Lord brought about a great victory. See, this guy decided to take the fight to the people in the middle of a bean field. Verse 13. Then there, then three of the thirty chief men went down and came to David in the harvest time to the cave of Adullam, where the troop of the Philistines was camping in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, while the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David had a craving and said, Oh, that someone would give me a drink of water, or a drink of um, water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Verse 16. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem, which was by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. I want to stop there today. I'd like to talk to you about these three mighty men for a few minutes. And then I want to talk to you about the mighty men and women of God, what God uses to change the world for Him. The mighty men of God had actions taken. They were fighters. Joseph, Joshua, we call him Josh, Killed 800 at one time. His attitude was, I don't think I can lose. No, I know I can't lose. I can just almost see this man in the battlefield after he'd taken about the first hundred. And he can go, wow, I didn't get a cut on me. And the second two or three hundred, and by the time he got to the 700, I think he had said to himself right there, I can't be touched. I'm going to finish this out. I'm going to take out the 800. And guys, we see a mighty job happen because of some things that he knows. Now, I want to ask you a question today, and, I, and I'd like to make this a real simple question. How much do you serve God? Now, the real question here is, how is your service unto the Lord? Do you think that he would use you to take out 800 men? You think he might use your abilities to be victorious? If you'll notice in nearly every one of these passages, the Lord had a great victory that day. Did you pick up on that? The Lord had the victory. His, David's mighty men had gone through a lot of things with him. When it starts talking about David's mighty men and the things that they do that honor God and honor David, it's because of whom they serve that you see these 800 go down. See, God knows that you and I, to learn and to grow, need to see mighty victories. We need to see things happen that only God can do. And I will guarantee you that at this time, when God starts moving, He starts creating victories in people's lives. I will tell you that at this time, Josh pulls out his sword and goes to work, and God has given him strength. Folks, I just want you to understand, understand the strength of God. The power of God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. He took that man's hands and he made them a lethal weapon because he was in charge. And he was that Josh, Josh was to bring honor back to God. It wasn't to David. Although he was one of David's men, God gave him those men. 
We have to understand that God provides into the house of God people to take on the things of this world. There's, that's, I think that's a responsibility. So I just want you to know that whenever we have a war or a responsibility to fight somebody and our government calls for that, I don't have a problem one. In fact, I, I believe we ought to have young men and women to say, I want to go, I want to do, I want to serve, I want to be a part of the victory because I want to bring God in it with me. I want God to help us to do that. Folks, just remember this. God wants to develop his people to be his godly people, to do the things of God, to measure out where others look at them and say, this man was a man of God. <laughs> yeah. Here's another guy here. Not only Josh, but Eleazar, son of Dodo. Look at this. The Ahohites. One of the three mighty men, David, when they defied the Philistines, they gathered him in. He, he gets into this such a battle that he's pulled his sword. He's gripped that sword so long in this battle that it finally just, his hands close around it. He couldn't let go if he wanted to. I probably think God strapped it on him somehow, but here's what I'm thinking that happens. He said, and the Lord brought about a great victory that day. The people returned after him only to strip the slain. They had not seen the victories of God. Folks, hold on just a minute. I just want you to understand something today. Now, it won't be too long. We're going to go eat. But before we do, I want you to hear what I'm telling you that is out of the Word of God. He says here that they, the, the Philistines were taken out and the children of Israel, the warriors that were supposed to be warriors to fight the fight, ran back in and took off of those people what was theirs. They didn't see the victory. Sometimes we can get so far past what we need to be looking at, we need to be looking at what God's doing. You see, God took him to a spot. He allowed him to close his hand around that sword. He allowed it to stay that way until he had slayed what he was supposed to slay. And the people could not see past the end of their desires. Think we ever get to the spot of a desire being more important than what God desires? We sure do. It's easy for us to get there. Hey, let me ask you a question. When we, when we honor God and we do what He has given us to do, and we say, here, Lord, I want to serve you. I want to be faithful to you. I want to I do what you want me to do. I want to be, I want to be obedient to you. And then all of a sudden, it all, it's all over, and we don't see God like others see God, but we, we know God was in it. Do we give Him praise and glory? Do we honor Him? Do we tell others about the victory of what God has taken us through and helped us to see? I just tell you, sometimes I think we get on past that, and we just back up and we say, mm, this, is, this is what God was going to do. This is what God said He would do. All I see is a man with his hand clapped around with a real mean spirit. He's taking out everybody in the world. I'll guarantee you those Israelite people were saying things like, he didn't need any help. He, who needed me? Wait a minute. I'm going to bring this back home in just a minute. This is fixing to get serious. Now after him was Shema. Shamma, the son of Aji, a Hararite, right, Hararite. And there's a whole lot of ites. Okay? And the Philistines were gathered into a troop where they were, there was a plot of ground. And I almost see this as all the Israelites were taken off. And I think probably what happened here, although I could be wrong, it's just how I see this. Here is Shama, and Shama is running with the, in the back of the crowd. He's kind of wondering why we're not fighting. And I think all of a sudden what he does here is he just turns around and he says, Okay, we cleared this ground. This is our lentil field. This is our bean patch. I'm not leaving off of it. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to fight the fight. I can almost see this. 
I could almost see him pulling his sword, drawing it, but he took his stand in the midst of the plot and defended it and struck down the Philistines. Look at what else it says. And the Lord brought about a great victory. Amen. Let me give you three things, It'll, and then I'm going to give you five. <laughs> I, can't do, I have to do the Baptist thing, which is three points in a poem, and then I'll give you five that comes from James. Okay. Number one, I know that Josh killed 800 by the power of God. Eleazar had an attitude of, I'm committed. And he had a covenant that he was going to stay and fight. Regardless of what everyone else does, regardless how tired, regardless of how tired my hand is, I'm not letting go. Shammah took his stand in a bean patch by himself. I will stand wherever, fight whatever, and for however long I have to, I'll fight. Now there's the three. Here comes the five. How can you be mighty men and women of God today? You know, one of these days, yesterday, we had a memorial service here. Brother Norman did an excellent job of remembering Brother Kelly. Amen. Brother Kelly was one of those guys that was a warrior. I, I mean, he really was, but he also had that tender side. I was thinking about the time him and Norman come to my house when Brother Norman just started, Dad decided he was going to raise cows on his five acres. So he had a calf. And Dad had never castrated a calf. Now I know some of you are offended already. Just get over it. You'll live. So what happened was, is that Kelly, Dad let that calf get way too big. So Dad said, well, you boys want to come out and help me? <laughs> so what do they do? They arm wrestle this cow till they, this calf until they get him on the ground. If you come to find out this cow, calf weighs 800 pounds. Him and Kelly wrestled that rascal down, and they castrate this calf. <sighs> there was just not too much those two wouldn't tackle together. It'd be pretty tough to say bye to a brother. Not sure I could do how he did it. Now back to where we're going, because I'm going to use this. God calls some people for a season to do certain things that nobody else can do. Right. Do you know that? It's a true story. God puts Gina here to play the guitar. God put Amy here to take care of that piano. Brought, God brought Andy. Where'd you go, Andy? Okay. There he is. Y'all moved. You can't go to heaven if you keep that up. <laughs> Sorry, I just teasing. But here's something I guess we've got to learn as a church. Maybe James. Maybe it's just me. But God does call warriors out of a world of peace. He calls people to stand up and become mighty men of God and women of God. And here's what he does with it. Here's the first thing that you got to do to become a mighty man or woman of God. For my young people as well. First, know who and why you're serving. If you don't know who you're serving, I'll promise you, You'll never have the gumption to stand up in front of 800 when the battle comes. But if you're serving God and you say, this battle's yours, take my life or use me to victory. Whatever you wish, Lord. When a person starts leaning toward, toward God to handle the victories and the losses that we have in our lives, 
God takes care of us. He will watch us through it. He will take us through it. If you want to be a mighty man or woman of God, you got to know who you're serving. And so I'm going to ask you today this one question. Who do you serve? Now, some of us in this room are serving just ourselves. And I understand that because I've been there. I know what that is. But I want you to know when God said that you, you and I are sinners, he said, for all have what? Sin. Come short of what? The glory of God. So every one of us are sinners. Every one of us have, have done wrong in the eyes of God. But if you want to be God's, if you want to be a child of God, if you want to be obedient to God, there's some steps that you need to take. Here's number one. You need to ask Him to forgive you of your sin because you're a sinner. And ask Him to live in your life because, see, if He lives in your life, when you're changed for the glory of God, God will do mighty things through you. You may say, well, I'm already doing good things. I wonder what would happen if you did those good things and it turns into great things and you're obedient to God. Hey, hang on just a minute. Let me hear you think through this just for a second. The room's fixing to get real quiet. There's some of you that will not listen to a sermon worth a flip. But I just want you to hear this one thing. God's calling you already to salvation and you don't want to listen. You want to pay attention to everything going on around you. You want to think about what we're going to go eat instead of what God wants to do in you to change you so that you can become a mighty warrior. See, I believe God wants us to be warriors. I believe God wants to call us out. Here's number two. Number two, do whatever you are doing totally committed. So in other words, that means if you're going to serve God do it with everything you got. If you're going to do anything halfway, you might as well forget it. Because halfway never did anything. Now hang on just a second. Hold, hold on. Just hear me out. So Janelle, we got a new baby. Can you be a halfway mom? Not very easy. Especially when that little rascal says, Feed me. I got to eat. No, you can't be halfway. But what are you when you're totally committed to God? What are you, what do you look like? What do you sound like? I'll promise you, here's what people are going to say. He is a Jesus freak. Or he has, he is, he's well past gone. He's a straw shy of a bell. That's what they're going to say about anybody that commits their life to walk for God. But I will promise you this, if you'll listen with just this minute, I'm going to tell you God wants to do mighty things in us if we'll but let him do it. Right. See, I had, a, I had an old motorcycle once. It was, a, it was a Yamaha 800. It was a racer. And it had one problem. It would run like crazy. I mean, you get on that thing, you hit that. Hit that gas on that rascal, and you better be holding on, because she'd go, Whoo! you heard those sounds before. There was only one problem with that bike. You never knew when it was going to die. It just, boop, it's over. Be at a stoplight, two cops on each side pull up to you, and you're thinking, oh, Lord, please start. I don't have my driver's license. Then all of a sudden, it'd start back up. We never knew what was wrong with that bike. I gave it away. Hang on a minute. I realize that there's lots of things in life we'll be going along and we just realize things are not working the way they're supposed to. This thing is off and it does good. I'll get to be a Christian for a while and I do good and then all of a sudden something else hits me. A, 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 an old friend talks to me or somebody gives me something that distracts me and next thing you know I'm back off over here doing my own thing and I'm not being godly. I'm not being right. I'm not doing what I need to do. I'm not, I'm not running for the Lord. I'm just doing my thing. I just want you to know God calls us out to be special and individuals. He also calls us to do the third thing. Here's the third. Have the proper heart. That's, that's that fellow that grabs a hold of that sword and slays 800 guys. And he says, I just can't lose. 
Now, I'm sure in the beginning, whenever he's going along there, he's got it thought out. Maybe, maybe I can kill this hundred. Maybe I can kill 20. Maybe he gets to 100 and he says, maybe I can take out another 150. And by then, maybe he's got it figured out that he's going to really rip and snort and he gets a new God energy. And all of a sudden, he becomes undefeatable. 800. 800. And you say, oh, that's just a story. That's called the Word of God. <laughs> All right, number four. So I, I think you have to know who you are and who you're serving. I think you need to do whatever you're doing totally committed. I think you need to have the proper heart of I can't quit and I won't lose. I think you have to say I am not quitting no matter what. And fifth and final. Work together with people of the same spirit. Work together with people of the same spirit. That's kind of odd that you would put that one in there. Because, see, those three men of God, they have worked together before. They were looked at as the mighty men. If, in fact, you were to go ahead and read on further down, he, David, would look at the mighty men, the three, and then he would look at these others who have done mighty things. And he would say this, listen, these guys were good, but they didn't hold up to the three. They were great. They did a good job, but man, to be one of the three. Because the three were mighty men of God. So if you're going to be a mighty man, mighty woman of God, no matter... Lennon, no matter how old we are, no, how, no matter how young you are, all right, all right. you may want to put some time frames on God, but I will promise you this. If you will stand up and be what God called you to be, and you'll sweep the floor with the world, and you will do what God called you to do. And when you do that, God will be glorified, and a mighty victory in God will happen. So let me just ask you a little question, and I am through preaching. It's your time to do music. My question is this. Are you just going to keep being you? Or do you want to be something more? Something more. Let me show you something. Y'all know what this is? I'm not much on pink. I like girls. I'm, I'm good with the new baby, Janelle. And I know it's a little girl. But here, here we go. Here we go. Pink. Kind of represents girls. Okay? I use this highlighter to mark scriptures in my Bible. And then when I'm going to preach, I go back and I highlight it with yellow. And I make sure that that's my main points. So if you pick up my Bible one of these days when I croak off, well, then you can know what to preach about for my funeral. Now, here's what I want you to hear. I use this because it brings out points in my message that helps me to stay on task. Here's what I want you to know about this. Every time we preach, I hear people talk about different things things that touch their hearts different things because god could use a mule to talk to somebody so i can be his mule i'm okay with that but let me just say this what's god want to do in you today would you be willing to say god no matter who everybody else thinks i am i want to be I want to be your servant. I want to serve you. I want to be a mighty man of God. I want to be a mighty woman of God. I want to be obedient to God. I want to serve God. I want you to have victories through my efforts, God. I need you to be lifted up in my life. So this morning, my question is, do you want that? Would you like that? Would you like to see God do some mighty things in your life? Then give Him your life. Would you bow with me this morning? Every head bowed. 
Nobody looking around. I'm going to ask you a question. This is a hard question. Nobody looking around. Thank you. I'm going to ask you a hard question. Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you asked Him to live in your heart, forgive you of your sin? If you're not born again, if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, today you can do that. What do I do, preacher? I say, all you simply do is say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need you to forgive me of my sin and live in my heart. Help me to be a mighty man, a mighty woman of God. Father, we bow before you together. There's some folks in here that need to get that Jesus thing correct. We understand that. So, Lord, it's up to you to convict their hearts, to call them out, to help them to get that right. It's also up to you, Father, that we would serve you correctly and help us to be obedient to say, Here, Lord, here's my life. Let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Holy, obedient to walk in you, understanding our faithfulness in you. Father, we need that today. We need people to stand up and be called out. Help us to get there. Father, today in this room, we love you. I ask you to work in us, for it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? If God's dealing with your heart, you want to get this salvation thing taken care of, how about it this morning? Just come, take me by the hand, say, Brother James, I want to get this taken. Brother Andy's going to sing. I encourage you to come. If God's dealing with your heart, come. If God's trying to call you out to be a mighty man, a mighty woman of God, then how about saying, okay, Lord, I, I give. I give. Help me, Lord. Help me to have that heart, that attitude, that spirit. The Savior is waiting you come now. Come on. to enter Don't wait. your heart. Why Are you born again? Do you sure know you're sure? You're born again. There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. Nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer? What is your answer to him? Time after time. Time after time. He has waited before. What's he doing now? Is he waiting on you? To see if you're willing to open the door? To see if you're willing to open the door, Lord. Oh, how he wants to. Come in. We're going to sing one last verse. Nobody comes. I'm through. If you, you take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find His arms open Just like this. Receive Him. And all of your darkness will end. your darkness will end. Within your heart he'll abide. Let's sing it out, church. Come on, let's sing it out. Time after time, time after time, he is waiting before. What's he doing now? And now he is waiting again to see what? To see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Amen. If you would be seated. I'm going to ask the ushers if they would come forward. And while they're on their way, I want to... To remind you, let you know a couple of announcements we have. One is uh, in a couple of weeks on the 24th, 
we are asking the decorating committee is asking you to help and be involved in us decorating the sanctuary. So on the 24th, we didn't have announcement slides today. And so you will see this on the slides next week. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the 24th, we will have a, a sanctuary decorating party. We want to invite you to become a part of that. It will all be laid out. You will have instructions. The committee will no tell you exactly what needs to happen at that point. The other thing that I want to let you know, Dean, can you throw that slide up for consent? Y'all have a seat for just a, a moment. Throw that slide up for consent, the text up toward the top. We are trying to, to put together a communication package because a lot of us do not read emails on a regular basis. And, uh, but you do text. So we're coming into the cold part of the year, hopefully. Some of you may not hope so, but hopefully we're coming to the cold part. We need a way to communicate to you if we have an issue to where we have six inches of snow outside on Sunday morning and we have to cancel church. We need to let you know that. So we are asking those of you that will consent to consent to receive texts from Central Baptist Church. I know some receive text from me, some receive text from James. Uh, there should be a consent to text slide on uh, the welcome part that has a QR code. Um, okay, never mind. But what we're going to happen, uh, what's going to happen is if you will consent to a receiving text from Central Baptist Church uh, from our new software that we're using, we need you to let us know that. So since, since my QR code is not working right now or it, it, it's hidden behind the blank screen, um, if you would contact me, text me, call me, call the church office, let us know that you want to receive the text that we send out because I know there are certain ones in here I know for certain never read their emails. So if you will let us know that, we, we need to have that. Before we can send a text to you, hey, there it is. If you want to grab your phone and, and grab that, that's a QR code. It'll send you to the form you need to fill out to consent the text. You, okay, you pull your phone out. Look at you Joe open Montgomery up your do his app. stuff. Now, iPhones have a QR code app, but if you don't have an iPhone, you have a camera app, it Go should in, be able to grab out. that. Let me see. And there's it. like a little yellow bar on the bottom. Uh, James will be able to explain this a little bit better Wednesday night. Yep. You can fill out that form to consent to text. There it is. If we send... There you go. And here's the reason we're doing it. I'm a If we I'm send hero. texts out... Can a you zero. mute his mic, please? No, don't mute my mic. <laughs> I'm a hero. No, I'm just kidding. If, if we send text out to the whole church, and if we get 5% of people who say stop or we don't want these, your providers you did it, did will send us to spam. Okay? And we can't get out of that. Oh, it's turned around. So it'll send us across the board to spam. So the reason we're doing the consent to text is for that reason. We don't want to go to spam. It will come to you. It'll be an 855 number, so don't go freak out or anything, but it'll say Central Baptist Church in the text when you get a text. We don't send them out very often, but on those emergencies and those times that we need to, we will be doing that. So there those you of go. you that want to get text, you can send, do that. If you don't have your phone, don't have it out. You can call the office or let me know, okay? I'm going to ask Brother Joe if he'll stand up and he'll lead us in prayer he's busy if he'll lead us in prayer and if if you would bless the food at the same time don't leave after the offering don't leave after the offering we have to re retire the flags and then we're going to sing our closing song you and lord open our hearts and minds that we would do what you want us to do, Father, whatever it is, lead us, Father, and we would take the task at heart and do it wholeheartedly, Lord, not part-time, whatever, full-time. Father, we just pray that you be with the ones that's 
in the hospital sick at home and once made the prayer request, Lord, the Father, whatever it is, Lord, you know who it is and what it is, Lord, you pray just put your hand upon them, heal them. Father, this time of year where we thank you for the veterans, Lord, the ones that gave some, some of them gave it all, Lord, we thank you for that, the ones who are serving now, Lord, we just want to say thank you for them and keep them safe. Father, we ask you to go with this food and nurse for everybody and just bless them, prepare it, Lord, so we partake it, Lord, that, Father, it just be used. Father, we go with this offering. I pray that it would be used to honor and glorify you and no other reason, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand as the colors are to be removed? Veterans, thank you again for being a part of us today. Thank you for giving. Church, thank you for being here today. There will be no church tonight as we're going to go home and all take a nap after we have foundered ourselves over here at the eating place. Uh, we want to take this moment just to say thank you for being a part of us today. Let me pray for us as we leave this building. Father, Thank you again for our time in you. Bless us as we've served you. Help us, Lord, to be faithful, to hear you, and walk in that obedience. It's in the name of Jesus we thank you for today. Amen. You may go. Go eat. Don't leave. Don't go home. Go eat.